sitting on my doorstep The people's passing by They're coming back from getting wrecked Everybody's high Saturday night, what a bitch Laying on the lawn The morning comes to bring the switch After the buzz is gone Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Addictions Podcast. I'm your host, David Wagner. Before we get into the subject matter of today's episode, in which we will be talking about nicotine and cigarettes in general, I'd like to explain my viewpoints on programs like NA and AA, or as many of us know them as, short for Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous. In some of the past episodes, I have voiced my opinion that at times these groups often behave or encourage behavior that seems to kind of go against their strict absolute abstinence from any and all drugs. Now, first of all, I'm not by any means trying to insult or poke fun at these types of programs. They work for a lot of people. But again, we are all different and there is no one-size-fits-all band-aid when it comes to those of us struggling with an addiction. And my biggest issues with groups like NA and AA are that they do preach the fact that if you are addicted to one substance, you should never indulge in any other substances, period. But the fact is that in many cases, a person may have only one addiction issue, and that is the only issue that they would like to tackle. And although it may seem controversial, but for me, medical marijuana is a godsend for my extreme post-traumatic stress disorder and my ongoing neuropathic pain resulting from a a broken left femur. And medical marijuana indeed does help me with both of those issues in a much safer way than becoming dependent on benzodiazepines like Xanax and painkillers like hydrocodone. So again, just in my opinion, for myself, total abstinence from all substances just seems really counterintuitive. Especially since 9 times out of 10, you walk into one of these types of AA meetings or NA meetings, and they seem to be fueled by caffeine in the form of free coffee. And as we spoke about in the last episode, caffeine is the most widely used and abused psychoactive drug on the entire planet. And it does indeed have the potential for physical dependence and addiction. Now, with the medical marijuana, for example, if I go a day, a week, hell, even a month, I am not experiencing cravings for it. I'm not having physical withdrawal, whereas with the pharmaceuticals, I end up depending on these drugs just so I can function and hold down my job. But with marijuana, I can pick it up and put it down without a second thought. That's not to say that there are, you know, a certain percentage of people who do have problems with dependence with marijuana. I just wanted to clear clear a few things up there. But anyways, I'm going off on a tangent here, but I wanted to explain my opinion on the NA and AA programs. They do work, and they've saved countless lives, I'm sure. But these programs are not for everyone. The key is finding the best recovery options for your particular addiction and building a strong and caring support group around you. I can't stress that enough. That is one of the most important things that you need to do if you want to be successful in conquering any addiction. A strong support group. People that care about you. Moving on to the bulk of the episode here, nicotine and specifically the recent news here in the U.S. that the FDA wants to reduce the amount of nicotine in cigarettes. On July 28, 2017, the FDA made this announcement. In a statement, the FDA commissioner took a more personal approach to addressing tobacco harm, saying it is the only legal consumer product that, when used as as intended, will kill half of all long-term users. Despite a change in culture over the past few decades, the FDA notes tobacco use still kills more than 480,000 Americans every year. Most people that start smoking are 
minors and they're just they're going to get into it way too early. Rushford Medical Director Dr. Craig Allen says minors are the most vulnerable too. He knows it takes 10 seconds for nicotine to get into a user's brain. The quicker the addictive substance gets up to the brain and the more potent, the more the more of that addictive substance that there is that is there, the quicker you will transition to becoming dependent and, and developing a full-blown addiction. He supports the FDA's proposed rule, but Wallingford's Kimberly Bowen doesn't think it's that simple. I think I would probably, you know, double double what I'm smoking to begin with, you know, which isn't going to help anybody. We'll see how that conversation evolves from there. I'm Christian Cordero, NBC Connecticut News. And well, at first glance, this may seem like a really good idea. You know, reducing the nicotine in cigarettes could potentially reduce the amount of cigarette smokers across the nation, and by doing so, save countless lives. But in the same token, and as a smoker myself, I can almost guarantee my next claim. Reducing nicotine levels in cigarettes is going to most likely lead to current smokers simply buying more in smoking more cigarettes in an effort to gain the same levels of nicotine that they were receiving prior to the reduction of nicotine. Or, nicotine-addicted persons will titrate their intake of nicotine by taking bigger puffs of smoke into their lungs and holding the smoke in their lungs longer, which this in turn would actually probably result in many more smokers dying sooner because they are smoking more. And I feel like this is true even if they raise the price of cigarettes. I mean, if you've ever been addicted to something for an extended period of time, you quickly realize that addiction causes you to make up excuses to justify spending any amount of money on it. And I, I've said this many times before, but when I was addicted to opioids, I ended up spending 75 to 85% of my weekly paycheck on dope. It got as bad as me selling many of my prized possessions to pay for drugs. And while you may not end up selling your Gibson Les Paul guitar to pay for cigarettes, lower nicotine and higher price per pack of cigarettes probably is not going to make you just quit smoking. Of course, it could start a black market for high nicotine level cigarettes, thus causing an entirely new criminal sector. And who knows how that entire situation would play out. But I feel like it would be a giant step backwards in reducing the amount of cigarettes people consume. In my opinion, rather than reducing the nicotine content in tobacco products, we should be educating people more and more about the very real dangers of smoking tobacco. And again, I do feel that society has made leaps and bounds in the educational aspects of the dangers of smoking, but it needs to be saturated. In many countries, cigarette packages have images of decaying lungs and stuff like this in an effort to reduce people from buying cigarettes period you know will it solve the problem probably not completely but it is a step in the right direction and it's one that i feel should be implemented here in the united states again don't get me wrong i am a smoker myself and i'm not saying that cigarette smoking is a good thing it destroys people's lives and study after study have shown that cigarettes will slowly kill you in fact it kills millions of people on a very regular basis and it nearly killed my mother a few years ago. But the sad fact is that many people enjoy smoking, and they are not going to just simply give up due to a reduction in nicotine content and higher prices on cigarettes. Us addicts are resourceful people, and we will find a way to receive the same levels of nicotine even if the FDA reduces levels of nicotine in cigarettes. As I said earlier, if, if anything, those addicted to nicotine are just going to start smoking more to get the same amount of nicotine. And to be totally honest, I've been actively striving to kick the cigarette habit. But I worry about millions of other smokers who will no doubt only increase their nicotine consumption if we see this reduction in the amount of nicotine in tobacco products. So, what are your opinions, dear listeners, on this subject? Feel free to send us an email at the Addictions Podcast at gmail.com. You can also contact us on our website, which is www.addictionspodcast.com. You can even shoot us direct messages in Facebook at facebook.com slash addictionspodcast. We would love to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions on this topic. And again, I just want to say that I can see the good that could potentially come from reducing nicotine in cigarettes, but I can also see the somewhat darker side of it. 
So yeah, shoot us a message or feel free to discuss it on our Facebook group for the Addictions Podcast. You can find that discussion group by visiting the community tab on the Addictions Podcast Facebook page. Moving on, there is one other topic that I would like to briefly touch on before we wrap up this episode. In the past week here in the U.S., President Trump has pledged to end the opioid epidemic with what he is calling a three-pronged plan to end the opioid epidemic. Now let's go over the basic premise behind this idea. One of the biggest things is that Congress has approved around $6 billion to help with prevention, improve access to resources to help people struggling with addiction, and for better law enforcement. And this is a really big deal, and it's a lot of money. But the money is only set to be spread out over only two years. And I worry that two years is just not a feasible time frame for ending this thing. Many drug addicts require a lot more than two years of treatment and recovery. The next part of President Trump's plan is to institute the death penalty for those who are either caught trafficking or dealing opioid drugs. And when I first heard this, I kind of chuckled and thought, well, a doctor was my drug dealer and drug trafficker for over four years, so are we going to start lining up doctors and pharmaceutical industry leaders for the death penalty? Highly unlikely. Well, to a degree, I understand that many of the more kingpin type of drug traffickers, they should indeed face major legal punishment at the least. I do not think that small-time dealers should just be put to death. That's crazy. And many addicts only move to heroin after realizing that the opioid medications which doctors originally hooked them on are just not getting them high anymore or have become too expensive. Moving on to the third part of this three-pronged plan is to reduce the overprescription of these types of drugs by doctors. But the thing about that is that it's already happening. For example, my father suffers from terrible chronic pain in his hand from losing a couple of fingers in a farming accident. He is unable to get the proper pain management from his doctor. The doctor flat out refuses his his request for narcotic pain medications. And my father is a man who has never had a history of addiction or anything like that in his past. So you can kind of see the issue here. Now that doctors are so afraid to prescribe these drugs, there are many people whose pain is going unmanaged and are needlessly suffering because of this fact. Now, regardless of what we think about President Trump, he does deserve some praise at least for trying to address the addiction issue here in the U.S. We must also scrutinize and really think about these types of policies before just blindly implementing them. The one part of President Trump's plan that I wholeheartedly agree with and am happy to hear is the expansion of treatment and prevention in all 50 states. But only time will tell if the president will be putting the money where his mouth is. So let's keep our fingers crossed. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for listening. And remember, you can listen to any of the episodes of the Addictions Podcast online at our website, which is www. Dot addictionspodcast.com or through your preferred podcasting app on your smartphone. And if you really love the show and want to help support what I'm doing, visit the donations link on our website. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash addictions podcast. Thanks again for listening. And remember, never quit quitting. So damn far Your head feels like it's in a blender And you hate to see the dawn Your stomach says return to sender